What's up guys, we're back with the second figure in Thundercats Ultimates Wave 3. Today we are taking a look at Captain Cracker. So just like the rest of the uh, figures in this line, we do get the normal style packaging. Uh, he is in a more traditional style box compared to Slide because he's not a, a weirdly shaped character. So he's got the Mumra treatment. He's not, you know, necessarily a Mumra affiliated villain specifically, but he's a bad guy. Uh, so he gets the uh, Mumra logo treatment and the red foil. Thundercats logo on the back. This guy is a bit of a surprise to see early on. He's, he's not in the show very much, but he is, I guess he's a little bit more memorable. And of course he did get a vintage figure. It's one of those that eluded me. I still don't have him and I've never had him. Uh, so this is nice to, to still finally get this guy in some form. Uh, of course, once you get that slip cover off, you've got your figure there in full view uh, with that uh, big open window. You've got your figure and all of the accessories, Thundercats logo, and then the back of the box gives you some new artwork of Captain Cracker as well as a bio for this guy. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Captain Cracker figure. Again, a, a slightly surprising entry this early on in the line. And I guess that maybe it's not really that surprising because Super 7 has basically said they're going to do this kind of stuff, but it still seems kind of odd uh, to get this guy early because there's a lot of figures I would rather have, but at the same time, I like the idea of them kind of giving us those lesser known characters like this guy, but also characters that are nods to the vintage line. Because like I said, this guy had a vintage figure uh, from LJ and one that I've never had my hands on personally, uh, but I'm excited to be able to get this guy. He was only in a couple episodes, but he is very memorable just because he's a robot pirate. I mean, what's not to like about that? So uh, let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. He is kind of normal while at the same time being a little bit different. Not too, too different, but a little bit. So uh, we've got a head that can look up slightly. His head kind of juts forward a little bit. Not the same way that slides is kind of like sticking right out of his chest, uh, but he has kind of like a crooked neck that's always sort of pointing up. He looks down slightly. You've got tilt, because it's a ball peg. Actually, it's really solid tilt. And then of course you can rotate all the way around. Arms go out at the shoulders about all the way. And then they rotate as well, of course. You've got a bicep swivel on this guy. We've got a single jointed elbow. It's not, it's about 90 degrees, maybe a little less. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit less. Uh, and there is no swivel at the elbow though. So it's it's a bicep swivel, not an elbow swivel here. You've got your, your uh, rotation and hinges at those wrists. He's got an ab crunch. He goes forwards about this far. He doesn't really go back at all because the, uh, the black on this vest will hit the back of the figure and it basically stops him from moving. So he goes forward a little bit and then you've got your waist twist down there. I still think that at some point, just based on the fact that it, I don't know if it would make a difference in terms of tooling or cost, but at some point we need to get away from like the twist on these guys and I think we need to go full on like what horsemen do for their own line, legions, mythic legions, and have like a ball peg waist. Uh, just so you can get a little bit more range out of that uh, so it can be a tilt and a rotation without just being the rotation. I think that'd be helpful. Uh, it'd be a little bit um, easier to make these figures look a little more dynamic too. Legs go all the way out so you can do the splits if you want them to do the splits. They kick forward all the way. Uh, as you can see, I moved the, uh, the sheath out of the way just to do this. They kick backwards a good bit. You do have your uh, thigh cut up there. Let's move that back. You've got your single jointed uh, knee. And then we've got our ankle down here. Doesn't really seem to have a rocker on it. It does rotate within the cuff of the pants. And then you've got a little bit of hinge, but it's pretty limited uh, in terms of what it can do. And then of course his right leg has no ankle at all because it's a peg. It still has a hinge and then everything else is the same. So there's nothing else down there. So he he's fairly normal while at the same time uh, also being a little bit unique just because some of the stuff on him is maybe a little bit non-traditional uh, in this line to some respects. And then of course the peg leg introduces its own thing because there is no articulation from uh, that point down. Otherwise though, very similar to a lot of the other figures, he is just very much his own thing. He's an entirely different kind of character uh, than your normal thumb under cat or evil mutant. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, the aesthetics of this guy, he is very much cartoon oriented, which is basically the theme for this uh, series when it comes to ultimates. And he's also gonna be a little bit different in terms of overall stature because he, he's of course a smaller character. He's not huge. Uh, he's not as tall as Lion or Panthro. Uh, and he's, he's maybe a little bit more in line with Mumra in terms of height. So he's a little bit different. Uh, he definitely has his own unique qualities and he he's just a, 
He's just a different kind of a figure. He's not a big muscle-bound guy. He's a robot pirate. So he gets all of the stuff that goes with being a robot and then all the stuff that goes with being a pirate. Big thing to talk about with this guy for me is the overall finish on him. And that specifically is talking about the tones of what should be metal here. So, of course, his skin tones on this guy. So you've got kind of this, like, pearly, silvery blue color for a lot of him, accented by some of this uh, sort of pewter and then silver when it comes to the face. And it looks a little bit different here than it's likely going to look if you're going to go back and watch the cartoon, because it's one of those instances of you've got what should be metal in the show, which isn't really shown as being metallic or super, super lustrous in many instances, and it's translating that into plastic. So Super Super 7's kind of uh, gone with what they can by making some of those tones into, into colors here. So you've got this sort of uh, pearly, silvery blue, which is not super bright, but it does have a little bit of a metallic sheen to it. And then you've got the actual, what look like real metal parts uh, on the elbow, on the uh, bicep and tricep area over here. And then of course he's got more of the same on the head, but it's a different, more lustrous silver uh, up top. I think they did a pretty solid job there. I mean, I don't think the colors are going to match specifically if you go back to the show, uh, but I think it's pretty close, and I, and I think I get the idea of what is happening here, so I'm pretty okay with it. Uh, you've got his very mustardy yellow shirt, which is all, all molded on the torso, uh, but this is painted over here on his arm, and then you've got the, uh, the black vest that sort of sits over top. Just sort of adds another layer of depth to him rather than him just having a yellow shirt. You've got your brown pants, you've got your very uh, sort of dull but metallic peg leg down here, which I do think looks really good. And it, it, it is very stable uh, as far as, you know, positioning him. I haven't had any real issue with posing him or getting him to stand up. Uh, it's sort of, it's sort of uh, angled at the bottom so that when you've got the legs splayed out correctly, it will sort of rest flat without sort of bobbing him around. So I do like that. And then of course, you know, you've got your head sculpt up here, which is very different, very unique. Uh, you've got sort of like that uh, trap jaw look almost where the jaw is a separate piece that is another piece of metal affixed to his robo skull up there. But you do have some very cartoon, ac maybe not accurate is what I'm trying to say, but cartoon, uh, cartoonish vibes when it comes to the overall look of this face from how those uh, so sort of eyebrows and the mustache is painted on. It's very thick and heavy, you know, like comic line art almost. Almost, And then you've got that really super pointy uh, silver nose with your black uh, eye patch, which is like riveted on his face, which I do like that. All of which is uh, topped with his sort of maroon, uh, slightly dark red uh, bandana up there. So there's, there's a lot to, to take in with this figure. Like I said, he's not big. He's not a monster. He's not a big beast of a figure. But there is a lot of stuff going on with him from varying finishes on this sort of pseudo metal metallic paint to the different colors in the outfit to the floating piece for the belt. And then just a pretty crazy head sculpt, which I'm really happy happy with. I think it very much looks uh, quite a bit like what jumps out of the screen when I think about him. Uh, so overall, he is a very different kind of figure, but he looks really good. I think they did a solid job uh, translating this guy from cartoon look to figure form. And then as far as size comparisons go, here's an idea of what he looks like with some other figures within the same line. So uh, we've got our Ultimates Lionel here on the left, which is a seven inch figure. So of course this right off the bat tells you that he is not seven inches tall. He's closer to six. Uh, he's more in line with a normal six inch figure really, but it's still a little bit bulkier just due to the scale of this line. And then we've got our slide figure from the same wave here on the, on the right. And you can see that they are more in line in terms of height, which is pretty normal. Again, slide is not a a super tall character and as such is not a super tall figure but he's absolutely dwarfed by him in overall bulk and then as far as like I mentioned you know otherwise here he is with uh, Mumra to give you an idea of what he looks like with our, our big bad. And like I said, these two line up a little bit more just because Mumra is, of course, a shorter character. He's shorter, he's not bulky, at least not in this form. Uh, so you get an idea of how these two stack up to each other just to give you an idea of what he looks like alongside a baseline figure for the line in Lion-O here and then something that's on the shorter side uh, with Mumra and the bulkier side with Slythe. And then as far as accessories goes, Captain Cracker has a decent spread. It's not 
you know, 50 pieces here, but I think he's got a decent amount of stuff in this box. The first of which is an alt head sculpt, and it's very similar to the one that, that's in the box. It's just like sort of a more neutral one. I would, I would go as far as to say that this is like a little bit too happy, though. Uh, he does not look even remotely evil here, and he's not like the most super evil character in the show, but he's, uh, he, he looks like he's, uh, you know, just gonna go play with the Thunder Kittens here or something. Like, he looks super, super nice, especially compared to this very devious and evil head sculpt with the, with the crazy smirk on it, which I do, I do like quite a bit. It's definitely gonna be my preferred, uh, head sculpt. He does come with, uh, extra hands, so you've got an extra head sculpt, and then you've got four extra hands on him as well. So he's got fists on him in the box. Uh, we get a set of gripping hands here. And then you get, well, these are wider gripping hands. You get a set, a, a singular, rather, a singular, more tight gripping hand. And then you get a sort of style posed, uh, sort of crooked finger kind of hand here. We get his weaponry. So you get the dagger that goes into his sheath. It's just a silver blade with sort of a, uh, it's, it's not the same color as his shirt, but it's sort of a mustardy yellow brown color for that dagger. So you can keep that on him at all times. He comes with a wrench just done up in a sort of slightly swirly metallic plastic. And then he gets his very LJN uh, toy-inspired sword here, which has no paint on it, similar to the wrench. Uh, this is definitely gonna be the thing that I use with him at all times though, so I'm happy that they included this. But the biggest and best accessories that he comes with are of course his Robo Parrot Polly. So you get this one here and it will sit on his back. He's got a hole right here and it will sit inside of that hole, and you can have him posed with his bird there. And this looks really good. Uh, I do think that, it, this again, this might be another instance of them trying to translate some of the, the sheens of metal on the show into uh, into colors here, but this looks really good. There's a lot of paint on this little bird, uh, and, and it sits nicely on his shoulder. The only thing that I don't really like about it is that Polly can't exactly be sitting on his shoulder if you want to do much with him. He's like, you know, you do something like that, it's going to fall off or it's just gonna be uh, you know, stuck behind him. So the arm it needs to be sort of at neutral resting pose for this to work. But I mean, you're probably gonna do something like that anyway, right? So it's probably gonna be just fine and I'm complaining about nothing. That's not really a complaint, more of an observation. And then we get another Polly as well, so you get two. And this one is one where Polly is a little bit more active with those wings spread. So entirely different sculpt here. Uh, and I do really, well, not an entirely different sculpt, but it is a change up from the wings. So the wings are obviously gonna be a separate piece on this. So they sculpted the normal wings and then you get the outstretched wings as well. And I do really like this. This one's probably gonna be the one that I use the most, uh, but I do like the fact that we have options. So when you get him kind of in like a, you know, an action pose with that sword in his right hand. You've got Polly riled up on his left shoulder. It'll make for a cool scene. So while he doesn't come with like a ton of stuff, I think he comes with a decent spread here overall. Plenty of hands, uh, two very nicely decoed birds, robo birds at that, and then uh, two head sculpts and three uh, holdable accessories. So yeah, not a bad spread and some interesting stuff here all around. So overall, I think Captain Cracker is a solid, if not maybe a little bit weird figure still uh, this early on, but I do like the fact that they got him out uh, sooner rather than later. It's nice to finally have this guy in figure form because like I said, I never had the LJ in figure, so it's nice to get this guy and to get a a modern one. I do think that he's probably going to end up at the bottom of the list for this wave for folks, and that's not because he's a bad figure, it's because the competition is very stiff. Uh, so you've got Slythe on the bad guy's side, you've got Jaga on the good guy's side. Uh, it's going to be hard to stack up to those two heavy hitters, but I think Captain Cracker is going to fill a nice little niche in this particular line so far. He's a smaller figure, he's going to vary the display, and he's a very different figure. Just like Slythe is a very, very different kind of figure from all the Thundercats, Captain Cracker Cracker is a very different figure as well because he's a small robot pirate. It doesn't get much more different than that. So yeah, pretty solid figure, fun to mess around with, comes with a solid array of accessories, and he is a robot pirate again for the last time. It's just fun. So that's going to do it for this look at the Thundercats Ultimates Captain Cracker. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.